Let's come back to our design. And now I want to add in this button here. And notice we've actually got another toolbar section and then the button. So let's have a look at how we might cover that design. Well, this has a column of extra small nine. So if we add three to that, we'll end up with 12. So basically we want a column extra small three for a toolbar over here. So let's go after the card. By the way, quick tip, if I click on this card, Notice that I get this little, um, this little indicator telling me where the end of that tag is. So if I click on there, I can now very quickly find the end of that tag. So now we can add another one underneath and say Q, uh, Q dash toolbar. And we might even make this a div. Yeah, let's make it a div just so we have a little bit more control by wrapping it. And we'll say class is equal to column and this is a column extra small three, because remember the other one was nine. We want our grid system to add up to 12 and three plus nine is equal to 12. That's why this is a three. So I'll jump out of that and then add a Q dash toolbar. And let's just see what we end up with there. Have to give this a color as well. So background dash primary. And there we go. By the way, primary is a configurable color that Quasar gives us. So we have a primary color, a secondary color, an accent color, but we'll cover all of that in a later video. So there we go. Now we're really starting to get the design that we want to here. And next we want to put a add button in here for adding a new to do. So I might actually put that within the toolbar itself. We can say here Q dash button, and we'll give this an icon equal to MDI dash plus. I believe that's the one. And there we go. Now, this is going to be a floating button. So if we come back to this design here, notice that the button is floating. And that's actually got a name. It's called a floating action button. And the short term for that is a FAB, F-A-B. So what we can actually do, since this is a common pattern, we can add in F-A-B for floating action button. And it's going to automatically design that as a floating action button. Now let's set the color equal to secondary so that we're using our secondary color there, just so it stands out a little bit more. Let's add a style tag in here and say margin is equal to, we'll say margin bottom is equal to negative 32 pixels. Let's see if 32 is a good number there. All right, so we probably want it to go a little bit lower. So let's try maybe 38. And that's still not quite enough. In fact, let's jump in here and have a look at that component by clicking on it like so. And we can see there that it is 56 by 56. So half of 56, and, oh my goodness, math. Not my strongest point, so I'm just gonna cut out this section of the video while I figure that out. I believe it is 28. So let's try that. Negative um, 28 pixels. <laughs> That's an even smaller number than before. Oh my goodness, my math is atrocious. That's totally fine though. All right, so 42 seems to work. So it looks like that didn't end up being half of the button size, but that's totally fine. We've got that working now. Next, I want to push it across a little bit. So I might say here, class is equal to Q dash margin left medium. And that adds a margin left of medium. So this is probably a new concept for you. Q means quasar. I want you to add a margin left. So a margin on the left side, and I want that to be a medium size margin left. We've also got that for padding left as well, which is going to give us a weird result. So we want to use margining in this, in this scenario. But we've also got like extra small, we've also got extra large, we've also got large, a whole lot of different values we can add there. So I might leave it on large, I think that looks good. And I think we're done with that. So we come back to our design. Yeah, they look pretty much the same. So next, let's add in this logout button. That's going to be pretty easy to achieve. So once again, I'll open up the side panel here. If we go to layouts, main layout, the layout once again is kind of like the skeleton around your application. After the toolbar title, we've got this Quasar version and then the Quasar version number, which is this section here. So let's get rid of that and make it a Q dash button. And this will have an icon equal to MDI dash, I think logout, does that exist? And there we go, it does. And now let's just do the styling a bit by making that flat and round. And you can do whatever styling you like here. If you don't want it round, then you can get rid of that. If you want some of your own padding, 
then you can say here padding and then say two pixels, for example. And that's going to make it very, very small padding. If you want, you can say two pixels on the x-axis and then 10 pixels on the y-axis. And then that's going to, oh, sorry, I got that the wrong way around. Two pixels on the y-axis and then 10 on the x-axis. And then you can add another couple of numbers in here if you want to completely control the padding. Uh, the point being that you have total control over the styling of this button. So we're going to make that flat though in this scenario and round. And there we go. And by the way, rounded is another option we have here. And that just rounds off the edges, but doesn't make it a complete circle. But we want a complete circle. So once again, back to round. Bit of a tangent there. Next, I want to tackle this section here, and that is actually sitting in the main layout. And by the way, we call this little thing that we can open and close a drawer. It is our left drawer. And there's one nuance that I want to change in this. Rather than having this toolbar be pushed to the side, notice how it gets pushed to the side and the drawer takes over. I want to make it so the drawer just shows underneath. I'll show you what I mean. What we can actually do, and I'm not going to explain this in this video, I'm going to explain this in a future video, but we're going to change that L to a H. Save that, and notice that the toolbar now stays on top. And by the way, this view section here, this is an amazing innovation that I'm pretty sure is just specific to Quasar, and it gives you insane control over the layout of your application. So it can be a little bit confusing to figure out, but once I teach it to you, it's going to blow your mind, these few little letters here. So that's just gonna have to be a little bit of a teaser for now. Moving on. So next I wanna remove absolutely everything in here. And this is how we do that. If we come down, we'll look for that section. Notice that it's a queue list, similar to what we used before. Let's get rid of everything in that list and add in a comment. So the reason I add in a comment there is that if I don't, have a look at what happens. When I save it, this becomes a self-closing tag. So if you plan on putting content in there, I usually just add in this little comment so that my linter doesn't turn it into a self-closing tag that I then have to later open up. So there we go, I save that. And now we actually need to remove the import for the essential links component because this is a component. So we need to get rid of that. Let's get rid of all of these list links this is some data that they use to render that component. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we don't need the component itself being registered under components anymore. And we don't need to expose that data anymore. So let's get rid of that too and save it. And there we go. Now it's working. And by the way, a quick note here, if I were to leave that in, for example, notice that in our terminal, we're getting some errors here. That's because we have quite a strict linter. And I like to have a strict linter because it prevents redundancy in my code and reminds me of things that I need to get rid of and basically forces me to fix those things before moving on. So now if I get rid of that, it says, cool, everything looks good now. So let's come back to our design and notice that we have this list section here that's got a slightly different background color to differentiate it from the list itself. And we've got a little plus button here for adding a new list. So let's go ahead, oh, and by the way, it's also got this little toolbar at the top there. That can be hard to catch. So notice in this design, we're missing that toolbar at the top. But here, we've got it in there, which just like, it makes it look like the search bar stands on its own. I really like it. So let's come back here, and we'll go back to our list, and add a Q-toolbar. And if you remember from before, we have to add a class that's got a background of primary. There we go. And just as a side note, we can say background blue, background green, background purple, background purple dash two to make it lighter, dash 10 to make it a darker purple. We have a lot of flexibility here, but we're going to use our primary background color, which is a configurable color. So if later on we want to change the design of our app, we can simply change this primary color. But once again, that's for another video, I digress. Now let's go ahead and add in the next section here, which will be the title of the list. So Q-item, Q-item-section, and let's just add in here, lists. So I'll save that, and there we go, that's our title. And remember, this had a slightly different background. So if we say class is equal to background-gray, maybe two? Yeah, maybe three, a bit darker. So that's gonna differentiate the title from the actual list items itself. And now let's come down here and add another Q-item-section. 
And then this one's going to have a button. So a button here that we can add new list items with. So let's go ahead and give that an icon equal to maybe MDI dash plus. And I might make this flat and round. There we go. Okay, that didn't quite work out. <laughs> now, this is, a, this is a weird little thing that you need to know about items within a list. If you have two items and they're both side items, you only want to add side to the last item in the list. Okay, so I want to add the word side here. If I were to add side here as well, we did, we'd get kind of a weird result. So you need to make sure that if you've only got two items, side sits on the last item of the list. And that gives us the design that we want. Just one of those things in life that you need to remember. So that looks good, but I might make this a little bit smaller. It's taking up too much space. Size is equal to small. And there we go, that's the title to our list. Now we can actually start adding in the list themselves. Q, whoop, we actually wanna add a new item here. So let's go underneath item. Q dash item, Q dash item dash section. And first I wanna have an icon, then the name of the list, and then a number that tells you how many items are left to be done on that list. Okay, so how about we have the icon first, Q dash icon, and this will have a name of equal to maybe MDI shopping. I'm imagining that this icon will be configurable. So you can say, give me a shopping list icon, give me like a work list icon, that kind of a thing. So let's save that. And that's got a weird design and that's because we need to add the word side here, which gives it more of like a side item design. Now we can say Q dash item dash section. And then this can just say, for example, shopping list. And that shows up there. Next, I wanna have a number of items to complete. So Q dash item dash section. Hopefully you're seeing the power of a Q dash item dash section now. This is why we have these item sections. So we have lots of control over our list items. But if you wanted to, if I just comment all of this out, you could actually just throw something directly in there. It just wouldn't style as nicely as you would want it to. Like shopping. So you can do that if you want to, but it's much better to add an item section, even if you just have a single word. So let's come in here. And I'm literally just gonna throw in a number, like, I don't know, maybe there's 12 things left to be done on the shopping list. And that is a side item. And there we go. The last thing before we finish up this video is to make this clickable. So notice that I get this weird sort of icon on my cursor. You know, I can sort of select it. We want it to be like a button where when you hover it, it highlights a little bit and gives our cursor a, a pointer like this. So let's come up here and add to the Q item clickable. It's that simple. And now we get a cursor and it highlights a little bit. So it looks a lot nicer for us. And so that's about it for this video. In later ones, we're going to make it so that clicking on these buttons actually bring up a dialogue. So we'll design a dialogue. Uh, we'll make it so that clicking on this brings up a dialogue. Clicking on this brings up like a logout dialogue, similar to what I have here, where we've got the creator to do, create a list, logout, all that kind of stuff. We'll do all of those dialogues in a later video. But yeah, that's it for now. Hopefully you're starting to see how ridiculously easy it is to start designing layouts with Quasar. I absolutely love it. I really am obsessed with these component libraries. And what I've shown you in this video really is just scratching the surface of the component libraries available to us. I mean, in this video, I've only showed you a tiny number of components that are available to you in Quasar. So if you'd like to, now might be a good time to just go to the docs, check out the component section and have your mind blown by just how many components are available through Quasar. And they are all beautiful. They all have a wonderful, consistent API and they are all extremely customizable. There are slots all over the place in these components so you can make them look and feel how you want them to feel. There are attributes, you can change the colors however you like. And all of the defaults are very, very sensible with the components. However, they are extremely extendable. So if you're watching this and you're wondering, well, do, am I going to have the design control that I want to have when I'm building with Quasar? The answer is a massive yes. You have a lot of design control with Quasar. In fact, it's very easy to make it look like an app that isn't material design. But 
by default, you get beautiful components out of the box. So thank you so much for watching. I really can't wait to dig a little bit deeper with you in the next video.